próximo. a nasty cut, Mr. Gourmet, but I think a few butterfly stitches is all you need. Hazards of the job, Dr. Conway. Mind you, it's been a long time since I cut myself. I know a workman should never blame his tools. Ow! Oh. If a knife isn't sharp enough, you are much more likely to cut yourself. Did you know that? Yes, I think I heard that said before. Ow! Sorry, nearly there, yeah. I blame Ralph. Oh, he's supposed to oversee the menial tasks. I see. But if you want a job doing well, you should do it yourself. Oh. Don't you agree, Doctor? Indeed. Can't get the staff. That's the problem. I see. Oh, Hugh Masters was in the other night. Do you know him, Doctor? Not personally. I know he's from Bamlington. I've seen him around on a couple of occasions over the years. Yes, nice chap. Dreadful programme he's in. Portway Place or something. There. All done. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Are you going to the reopening of the tea shop this afternoon? Yes, I suppose so. Always good to keep a close eye on one's competition. Not that it poses much of a threat for a restaurant of my standard, of course. I shall no doubt see you there, then. Yes, no doubt. Painkillers every four hours, if needed. I'll certainly need them to dull the pain of this afternoon. Goodbye, Dr Conway. Well, that's it. That's the last picture hung. Ah, it's a signed picture of Hugh Masters. Wow, Mum, that's brilliant. Ah, oh, he's so fit. How'd you get it? Sandra dropped it over last night when she confirmed that he's doing the opening. Oh my God, I'm so excited. The girls at school are going to die when I tell them about this. Did you check the loo roll in the toilet? Yep, I put them out myself. And did you have a look at the canapes? Yes, all ready to go. Great. Oh, do you think we've got enough Prosecco? Yes, there's loads. I've just got no idea how many people are going to come. Do you think people will come? Mum, calm down, will you? Of course people will come. You've done a brilliant job getting this all together. Now just enjoy it. Thank you so much, love. I couldn't have done it without you. Well, without me, you wouldn't have had to do it. I'm really sorry, Mum. Nope, we agreed never to talk about this again. I'm so proud of you, love. You're made of the strong stuff, like your old mum. Ah! Oh, gosh, you're five minutes early. All right, I just wanted to bring these um, to wish you good luck for your opening. Oh, they're beautiful. Thank you so much. I'll get a vase. That's so kind of you. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Flora, of Flora's Flowers. Oh, yes, I've been meaning to come into your beautiful shop, as things have been a bit full on since we moved here. Oh, yes. I'm I'm sorry to hear about the break-in. It's just awful. Yes, yes, but we're back on our feet now, and better than ever. Well, that's the kind of positive spirit that I like to hear. Perhaps you'd like to come to the Tai Chi class that I run on the Village Green. It's a real chance to connect with nature and with the universe. Uh, that sounds fantastic. Oh, excuse me, Flora. I thank you so much again for those beautiful flowers. And help yourself to Prosecco. Oh, lovely. Ah, oh, PC Adlington, so lovely of you to come. Stephen, please. It's five o'clock, and I'm a fifty off duty. Well, in that case, please help yourself to a glass of Prosecco to toast our reopening. I certainly will. You've done an amazing job tidying the place up. No one would ever know that anything had happened. That's what I was aiming for. Sorry to talk shop for a moment, but uh, I'm afraid that we haven't got much further in terms of leads. With no conclusive lead from the CCTV or fingerprints to go on, we're having to spread the net a little wider, I'm afraid. No, Stephen, there's no need. I've decided not to press any charges. It was probably only kids, and we just want to move on and put it all behind us. Oh, right. Well, that's fine. If you could pop round to the station next week to put that on record, that would be great. Of course. And maybe think about joining the Neighbourhood Watch Scheme. We have some very active members. Uh, yes, we will. Thank you for all of your hard work. Just doing my job. Sorry, no rest for the wicked. Please help yourself to a drink and the canapes will be coming around any minute. Don't mind if I do. Ah, Miss Wright. Ah, good evening, Stephen. Lovely to see you. Um, but can I ask for some advice? There's something of a mystery happening at my florist lately. Dorothy! It's just me. I've just got a couple of things to check before the big opening later. Oh, of course, of course. 
Come in, Sandra. Tea? Oh, that would be lovely, but we really don't have time, and I, I suspect we'll be awash with the stuff at the tea room. So where's my big star? Oh, he's just upstairs getting ready. Yeah. Coming, Mum. Oh, it must be nice having him home, Dorothy. Oh, it is. He's so busy these days. The only time I get to see him is when he's on the television. Already. <laughs> oh, Hugh, you look wonderful. Picture perfect. Oh, isn't your son handsome, Dorothy? Thanks. I've never been too fussed with designer clothes, though. They make me look silly. <laughs> no, oh, nonsense. You look fabulous. Do you think I could grab a quick picture? Please. Oh, just for the WI's newsletter. Oh, go on, son. You look great. OK, then. Uh, but we'd better be quick. Perfect. Now, on another note, are you sure you're happy to say a few words? I'm more than happy to present you with some ideas if you're not sure what to say. Thanks, Sandra. Uh, but as a professional actor, I think I am more than capable of giving a speech for the reopening of a tea room. <laughs> Shall we get going then? We don't want to be too late. Yes, we're all good to go. Right, follow me. Oh, lovely afternoon. Sandra, can I ask you a couple questions uh, just as we walk to Tina's? Of course, you anything. Well, what do you know about the famed Maurice Gromet? What, the chef? Well, apart from that dreadful spiel that the waiters give you when you sit down, nothing much to write home about. Well, is there um, anything a little less uh, publicised? Oh, no, nothing interesting to report, I'm afraid. I've obviously heard about his training in Paris and his numerous awards and five-star reviews. Oh, and I think he has a business partner up in Manchester. Uh, hang on. A business partner up in Manchester? I understand he has a partner with a shared interest in a Manchester location. Or perhaps another restaurant or something. No. Very interesting. Here he is, Mrs Whittington. Oh, hello, Horace. How are you, my little one? Yeah, his foot is completely healed uh, and he's put on a bit of weight. You're all ready for his release back into the wild. <laughs> oh, he does look better. Thank you, Mr Hanratty. I hope he's been well behaved. Well, hedgehogs aren't any trouble, Mrs Whittington. <laughs> no, I don't want him appearing on his big day in that old crate you've got him in. So I've brought this nice big picnic basket to transport him to his big send-off ceremony. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure that will be very secure, Mrs Whittington. I've thought of that. Look, I've made this nice cover from my lace tablecloth, which has plenty of holes in it so that he can breathe, and it's secured with pegs. Well, I, I suppose as, as long as you've got him with you, it should be OK. Just move him, please, Mr Hanratty. He is technically my hedgehog, and I only have his best interests at heart. Uh, I, I know. Um, come on, little fella. In you go. Oh, that's better, Horace. Isn't it? All cosy in your new basket. Right, I'll take him now. Say goodbye. Next time you see him, Mr Hanratty, he'll be scampering away through the allotments and into the fields. Well, uh, see you later, Horace. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't believe we're here. This is so tragic. Why did we come again? Two reasons. My parents are planning on turning up and I need to ensure they don't catch sight of the magazine. And the second reason? Well, free Prosecco, isn't it? Oh look, there's Cassie. I can't believe she's here. Oh seriously mate, give it a rest. She's not interested. Let's go over and talk to her. Give me a good chat up line. Barnes, please don't do this to yourself. Haven't you suffered enough humiliation already? Oh, come on, you can be my wingman. No way. Stay here, Barnaby, and stop staring at her. She'll think you're weird. Oh, Belinda, thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. We're all glad to see this lovely little place up and running again. Thank you. It's lovely that you were here. And that was that Cassie I saw over there? Yes, we wanted to show our support. You've done a really fantastic job getting back up on your feet. Can't have been easy. And what a great turnout. 
Looks like the whole village is here. Yeah, it's such a relief. I'm thrilled. It looks like even great Monsieur Gromet has graced us with his presence. I better go and give him a drink, I suppose. Let's hope he likes the nibbles. Excuse me. Goodness me. Horace! Look at all these people. What a wonderful turnout for your big day. Let me help you with that, Miss Whittington. Oh, thank you, Doctor. But do be careful. Our guest of honour is in here. Hugh Masters? No. Don't be stupid, Doctor. This is Horace, the hedgehog I rescued. Horace has now been lovingly restored to health and ready for his return to the wild. This event has been put on for him, really. Of course. Look, we'll just pop him down here, safe and sound. Now, I think the hero of the hour deserves a drink. Would you like Prosecco? Well, I don't usually, but as it's a special occasion. I think that I saw drinks over here. Ah, uh, right here. Right this way. Come on. Oh, you've made it, Sandra. And Hugh, and... Uh... This is my mother, Dorothy Masters. So, if you could just show us the ribbon, I took the liberty of bringing my own ceremonial scissors for the occasion. Ah, oh, thank you. It's so good of you to agree to do this, Hugh. Uh, I think it's important that we all have a quick glass of something to toast it with, though. Uh, don't you? Uh, Mum, would you like a drink? Oh, that'd be lovely. Oh, I will do the honours. <laughs> Tina, you get ready to say something. I'll just get us something to drink. Oh, no. I don't know what to say. I haven't really prepared anything. I'm not very good at standing in front of crowds. Don't worry. Everyone here wants you to succeed. One great tip that I was given at the start of my acting career was to imagine your audience in their underwear. But perhaps that's not wise in this situation. I can see Mrs. Whittington over there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, after you cut the ribbon, we're all going to go and release Horace, the rescue hedgehog, back into the wild. I thought this was all about the opening of the tea room, not the liberation of some scabby, flea-bitten mammal. Right, here are your drinks. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. So are you ready, Hugh? So you just need to cut the ribbon and then tell everybody about the hedgehog. Attention, please, everyone. It is... It is my very great pleasure to be with you here today in my capacity as chairperson and acting head of events of the Bamlington Women's Institute. This afternoon marks a joyous occasion in our village's history, the reopening of this tea room. And now it is my very great pleasure to introduce Tina Harding, the owner and proprietor of this fine establishment, which I'm sure will become a firm favourite for all of us in the village. Mrs Harding. Uh, thank you, Sandra. And thank you all for being here. I just wanted to say thank you for the support you've given to Sonia and me. We haven't had an easy road to get here. But many of you in this room have been so kind, and we are really grateful. So, uh, thank you. And now all that is left for me to do is to introduce the great, world-famous actor, Hugh Masters, to cut the ceremonial ribbon. Bonds, look, that's him. It's Hugh Masters. I know. He's really fit. <laughs> Cassie? <coughs> Thank you so much for your warm reception. And it is with the greatest of pleasure that I now declare Crumbs officially open. <laughs> the crumbs. To crumbs. To crumbs. To crumbs. I also have the very great honour of announcing that today marks a double celebration. The time has come to release Horace the Rescue Hedgehog back into the wild. Mrs Whittington, are you and Horace ready? Yes, I'll bring him over to you. Uh, here we go. Just put his basket up here so that everyone can see his little face once I draw back this lace curtain. So everyone, let's drink a toast to Horace and then decamp to the allotments to set the little guy free once again. To Horace. To, to Horace. Horace. Oh, that's so kind of you, everyone. I'm so flattered. I just did what anyone would have done, really. Well, you know what they say. 
not all heroes wear capes. <laughs> no, some wear floral house coats. And now I will draw back his curtain and present to you Horace. <gasps> oh no! What's wrong, Mrs. Whittington? It's Horace. Has he had a relapse? No, he's gone. Will you hurry up, Roger? Sorry, dear. I, I just thought I, I saw, thought I saw something over there in the bushes. We, you know, don't worry. No. Now it's not the time for one of your nature rambles. Just get into the car and drive. Are you sure, darling? You always hate it when I drive. Yes, I need to touch up my mascara on the way. Now, hurry up. We need to find Katrina. Well, you know, I don't really understand the rush. No, Roger, you never do. Now drive. It is imperative that we find her as soon as possible. OK, dear, and off we go. Oh, for heaven's sake, Roger, put your foot down. OK, everyone, don't move. Stand exactly where you are. Horace! Horace, where are you? We should all remain very calm and very still. It looks like he was a little keener to get away than we thought. Will you just be quiet? This is absolutely classic. Now I'm really glad we came. I'll check the kitchen. I'll look out by the bins. Good idea. If we all look around us very carefully, we'll find him in no time at all. Don't worry, Mrs Whittington, he can't have gone far. Typical. You should have pulled out in front of this tractor. Now we're going to be stuck here for ages. Well, it can't be helped. Yes, it can. What are you doing, Lucinda? Well, we've got to get past somehow. Oh, you'll have to overtake. Indicate, Roger. But I can't see round the bend. There's never anything on this road. Just pull out. <laughs> there. See. Safe as houses. Now, let's get to the centre of the village and see if we can find her. Of course, dear. But I don't understand the sudden rush to find Katrina. I wish you wouldn't drive like an old woman, Roger. Get her move on, will you? He's not here. I can't see him anywhere. Well, hedgehogs are very shy creatures. He's probably got scared and tried to find a nice safe place to hide. We've looked everywhere, Mrs Whittington. He's not out the back either. Right, who took him? Katrina Conway, is this one of your pranks? Oh, I see him! He's outside! He's, he's, he's on his way to the allotment! Well, would you look at that? His homing instinct must be very strong indeed. Oh, thank goodness! Oh, what a clever little thing, already on his way to his natural habitat. Well, um, might I suggest that we all follow him out there? Let's all charge our glasses and toast Horace's great escape. <laughs> <laughs> right, so eyes peeled. I bet she's somewhere here in the village. Hurry up, Roger. OK, dear. Who are all those people? Look up ahead. Coming out of the tea room. Well, it's the grand reopening today. We're supposed to be there. Of course it is. Katrina won't be seen dead in there. Hurry up, Roger. We've got to find her. Just drive on past quickly and they won't even notice that we weren't there. Why have you stopped? What was that? Oh, it'll be nothing, Roger. Come on, move! Oh, no, no, wait. They're all waving at us. What are they shouting about? I see her. That's Katrina. Reverse, Roger. I can't reverse here. I'll have to find a safe place to turn around. Do not argue with me, Roger. I need to talk to Katrina right away. Now reverse. Oh, hello, everyone. Gosh, this uh, looks like a lively party. We were just looking for Katrina. Ah, oh, could you? I have witnesses. You all saw it. PC Addington, you saw the whole affair. Is Horace OK, Mr Hanratty? No, I'm afraid not, Mrs Whittington. He's very much not OK. You murderer. You'll pay for this, Mr Conway. I'll make sure of it.
Thank you.